one of the most popular things for all the owners of smart homes is of course cameras and how well they suit their need and also their smart home. Today we are going to look at one of the latest rolling cameras. This one is E1 Outdoor Pro camera, which features 4K, 8 megapixel, but is also pan tilt zoom, works over Wi-Fi 6 and should fit nicely inside your smart home. In the last 4 years, and that's how old my channel almost is, I've featured a lot of cameras, and most of those cameras were from Reolink. And it's really awesome to see both my channel developing, hopefully, but also manufacturers improving on their own products and services that they provide. But before we look at this camera, it's time for full disclosure. I was sent free of charge this Reolink camera. I didn't receive any payment, and this is not a sponsored video. They sent me this camera to test and if I think it is worth to do a video on it. And I really do think that it is worth it. No money was exchanged and what you see in this video is my almost 3 weeks of testing the camera before the video is released. I was really hoping to test another camera which is also pan till zoom. Reolink said that they have a new camera that they would like me to test. So here it is. I've never ever tested any E1 type of the model of Reolink cameras and I was really looking forward to it because previously there were some issues, especially if you want to integrate inside your smart home or in Home Assistant. As everybody already knows, I will try to do later on. Before we continue with the review of the camera, couple of information. First of all, there is currently a pre-anniversary, then we have anniversary and then we have welcome back sale. The link to both this camera and the link to the anniversary page will be down in the video description. And yes, I will also be linking the Reolink AliExpress store, so you can go and check everything there. The discounts for the cameras range from 25 to 40%. That means that this is now a great time to get some of the Reolink cameras for the discounted prices. So what's so special about this camera? First of all, this is a 4K camera, meaning that if you go for a full view, you will receive nice and crispy image. Second, this camera also features Wi-Fi 6, and this should be benefit for you if you have a fast Wi-Fi network, and of course equipment that supports Wi-Fi 6. Also, this camera features pan, tilt and auto tracking. Pan tilt means that the camera can move left, right and also up, down and auto tracking means that if it sees the motion, it can follow that motion. For example, person, vehicle or a pet. I did test that one and it was really scary at the moment because you feel like somebody is watching you. Well, since this is a camera, it really was watching me. Rotation of the camera is 355 degrees horizontally and 50% vertically which at the end was a limiting to me because of the location where I installed the camera for testing. Actually, I moved locations. First, I was testing it in front of the front door, tracking people if they are approaching the door, but later on I decided to use something else that this camera has and that's time-lapse functionality. And this is where the issue with the vertical rotation came into play. I unfortunately couldn't move all the way up to look directly to the sky. The other great functionality of the camera is 3x optical zoom. It really is nice, I think we tested it also on the stream where we looked at the camera and the great thing is that it also features auto zoom, so you don't have to fiddle by hand on the zoom slider, instead the camera tries to zoom to the object that you are looking at from far 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 away. Of course, like any other modern cameras, not just from Reolink, but especially Reolink, it features both day, night and the night color mode. I do prefer night to be in black and white because it removes some possible artifacts that you can get if you look at the night images that are in color, but still this camera was good even in a smart mode or in a color mode during the night. Let's talk about some of the additional functionality. We already did mention pan, tilt and zoom functionality, auto tracking functionality, but this camera also has two-way audio. If you integrate it inside Home Assistant, the audio will be of course one way, but you can use two-way audio if you are using Reolink app. And I did configure a lot of things even before adding it to Home Assistant via the app, but to get all the bells and features, especially if you are not at home, you have two options, either use cloud functionality of the Reolink app 
or go to Home Assistant or Smart Home and use that as your interface when you are not at home. In terms of person vehicle and pet detection, I did test it with people and pets because I have it set up on the balcony and I usually do not drive my car on the balcony. In terms of person detection, it was spotless. In terms of pet detection, I think that it was just pointing a bit too much up and it didn't see the pet or it couldn't detect the pet. I did mention floodlight or a spotlight and it is really bright. I had to decrease brightness to around 30% to be able to test the camera because it was just too bright. And also the camera features siren or alarm. So you can use it as a warning or deterrent if you see people approaching your apartment, your house, when you don't want to see your relatives, friends or whoever. One thing I did play a lot with and this is time lapse. It has built-in time lapse functionality for sunset, sunrises, cloud tracking, for construction works, for monitoring how the flowers bloom, etc. But you can also create your own custom time lapses. This is probably the functionality that I played most with. And it's also very easy to set up. Go to the settings, click on time lapse, click on create new time lapse and select any of the categories, event, moving clouds, sunrise, sunset, and then you can also customize it. By default, the quality is balanced. You can select clear to get full 4K or you can leave it as a balance, which is 1080p. Then you select time interval, select how long it will last and you are good to go. What you see here on the screen is a couple of time lapses. Most of them were recorded at 1080p, while only one of them was recorded in 4K. That's my mistake. The problem for me is the big contrast in brightness between the sky and the forest or the hill behind my apartment. But nevertheless, I still did receive some nice time lapses. And by the way, if you want to see all the time lapses that I've recorded, you can see it after the end of the video. I will be leaving there all the unedited time lapses that I've recorded so far. Let's talk about setup. In the box, you receive almost everything you need to mount the camera. That is the camera with the mount itself power adapter, a very long cable because this is not PoE, this is a Wi-Fi camera that you have to provide power to. You also do receive a short Ethernet cable because yes, while this camera is Wi-Fi, you can hook it up to the power adapter and also use Ethernet cable to hook it up to your network. You also receive mounting screws, protection cover for the Ethernet cable, plus of course the manual. The UI for the camera is same as is for all the other rolling cameras. And the last time we've seen the UI was when we were looked at the Rayolink doorbell camera, which in my opinion is one of the best doorbells that you can get for your apartment. The default password is no password, but I already did set up one. The big difference now is that we have PTZ or pan, tilt and zoom control. We can slide and get the sound from the camera and we can change from fluent to balance but we cannot select this clear stream because it's not supported in the browser. PTZ, of course, is used to move camera left, right, up, down. We did mention zoom and zoom is really great, but after you zoom into object or a person, it will take some time for auto focus to finish focusing. Don't worry, it will eventually finish it. Next, you have ability to calibrate the camera. You can set up monitor point, which I did set up. Let's click on return to monitor point, which is this one here. You can, if you, for example, move camera up, down or whatever you want, you can reset monitor point and where the camera is currently looking at, it will be your future monitor point. I've also enabled auto, meaning the camera will return to this exact position after 50 seconds of non-activity. And of course, you can set up your waypoints. I have two, whatever. And anyway. And besides basic settings, advanced settings, we also have horizontal track range. Here we limit how far on the left and how far on the right camera will move while it is tracking an object. In order for you to use time-lapse, you need to insert the SD card in the camera. 
If you have SD card, you will also be able to use playback functionality. And then you can see yourself walking in the garden, taking a dog for a walk. If we go into the settings page, we can set up everything we can do on other cameras too. We can flip or mirror the image, camera name, move it to the bottom, top, left, right, daytime also to whatever location or disable it completely. We can add or remove the watermark. We can turn the flicker or anti-flicker on and off and also select if we want to leave for the day night camera in auto, color on black and white. If you need, you can set up the privacy mask but also control the brightness, contrast, saturation, sharpness, and play with black and white and color switching thresholds. You can set up the quality of clear and fluent streams, play with the alarm settings, for example, enable auto tracking for people, vehicles, or pets. You can schedule when you want to have this auto tracking on, play with the motion detection, smart detection, alarm delay, object sizes, and also set up detection zone. You can set up status light if you want people to be aware that the camera is working with the LED turned on or turn it off, play with the infrared lights, auto or stay off, and of course with the spotlight itself. In audio section, you can tick the box to allow audio recording, meaning that if the audio will be audible or not, and also play with the alarm and sound volume. Information gives you brief information about the camera itself, for the surveillance, you can set up when you want to record, what is the type of the recording, set up email notifications, FTP to push the recordings to remote location, siren, and push notifications. Network is used to set up network settings, but also ports. In my case, I have fixed IP address. It is hooked up to this access point, 5G network. You can enable UPnP, enable UID, enable dynamic DNS, set up network time protocol, and most important, at least for us, is server settings. In my case, most of the things have remained the same, but I have disabled HTTPS, enabled HTTP, and made sure that both RTSP and ONWIF are enabled. Let's remember those ports. ONWIF is on port 8000, RTSP 554, and of course, HTTP is standard port 80. Storage will give you information about the SD card that is currently inserted in the camera. If you have inserted it, and I really do recommend to insert it just in case. And of course, system is used for user management, time management, and updates and automatic resets or reboots of the camera. I did previously mention this and I will repeat it here. I always set up auto reboot. Each camera has different reboot times so that nobody knows at exactly what time the camera itself will be rebooted, but nevertheless I still do reboot cameras at least once a week. On my remote sites I do that once per day. Since last couple of updates, Reolink and OnWiv have been worked on. And now internal Reolink integration inside Home Assistant is much better than it was previously. Previously I would recommend that you go with the HAX or AJCS integration for it. But now, I'm confident that the internal Home Assistant component is au pair or even better than the HUX or HACS one. Let's go to Settings, Integrations, click on plus sign, type in Reolink, select Reolink camera, type username, password and the IP address. I strongly recommend that when you ever add cameras to your environment that you fix the IP address either by using static IP address or if your router supports it, fix the MAC address with the IP address. And let's click on submit. Select the location for the camera, finish. We now have one device added with 40 entities. Let's click on device and see what we can do inside Home Assistant with this integration. And believe me, you can do a lot. You can control the floodlight, you can control focus, you can use buttons to move camera up, down, left, right, stop, and also move it to the predetermined location. But that's not all. We also can select the presets and move the camera to the preset location. You have option to enable or disable recording, enable or disable siren, zoom, and from the sensors you can see motion, person, pet, and vehicle information. And you can use those inside your automations. But you can also configure camera from within Home Assistant. AI, person sensitivity, pet sensitivity, and vehicle sensitivity. You can enable or disable autofocus. 
you can move the trackers to track the limit on the left side, on the right side. You can enable or disable tracking, change the day night mode, enable or disable email on event, select the floodlight mode, select the brightness of the floodlight, enable FTP uploads, disable or enable guard return, time for the guard return. But if you move the camera, you can also use this button and change the location to where the camera needs to move. Enable or disable infrared, motion sensitivity, calibration for the PTZ functionality, record audio, enable siren on event, status LED, check if you have the latest firmware and also play with the volume. Let's quickly add this to our UI. And now in the UI, as we mentioned, you can press and move camera to the left side. Also return it to the original position. You can zoom and play with all the other available entities inside your smart home. And I also mentioned that you can use presets here from the UI too. Of course, the UI currently is too cluttered. So select what you want to keep here and what you want to leave in the integrations page. I don't think that you need to play with this configuration part every day. And you can also probably streamline this and have just a couple of buttons showing you if there is any motion detected and if it's a person, pet or a vehicle. So what's my final verdict on the camera? I'm really impressed. It has everything that you need from the pan tilt zoom camera. And the best thing, of course, is that you can hook it up to your home assistant. That way, you can keep everything private, but still get the ability to control it if you are not at home through your home assistant. And of course, since we have a lot of exposed entities, we can use it inside home assistant to also receive notifications if there is motion detected, if there is a person, pet or vehicle detected, and also image of it. I will be moving this camera to a seaside and I will be using it mostly to look at the sea from my apartment when I'm not there and also hopefully create some awesome time lapses of the sunsets and sunrises over the Adriatic Sea. One of the functionality that will be later on added to this camera is the ability to control it through the smart speakers, Google Ones and Amazons. And there is only one thing left for me to say in this video, and that is to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, subscribed or commented on my videos. If you do want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below or going to my merchandise store and there is a new custom link down in the video description and buying something there. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.